Good afternoon and good evening from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center. At this hour, a shift handover is in progress as the Orbit 3 team is uh, coming on console to take over the rest of the uh, crew's workday on board the International Space Station and to prepare for the opening of the hatch uh, between the Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft and uh, the Rosviet module of the International Space Station. Several hours ago, uh, in fact, five hours and one minute ago, the 70S crew, the Soyuz MS-24 crew of Laurel O'Hara, Oleg Kononenko and Nikolai Chub lifted off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on their Soyuz 2.1A booster. They uh, reached orbit less than nine minutes later, deployed their solar arrays and navigational antennas, and then embarked on three hours and nine minutes of transit for a docking to the Rosviet module that occurred at uh, 1.53 p.m. Central Time, 2.53 p.m. Eastern Time. Here in Mission Control, uh, again, the Orbit 3 team is coming on console. The Orbit 2 team that uh, was here overseeing uh, the launch and docking phase of today's activities uh, has been led by Chris Dobbins, the flight director. Zeb Scoville is coming on console to take over the Orbit 3 team, which will uh, take care of uh, the hatch opening, a mandatory and routine ISS safety briefing, for the newly arrived trio of crew members on the International Space Station. And then uh, we'll begin uh, to preside over the crew moving into its pre-sleep period and a sleep period uh, that will extend into Saturday morning. Across the ocean at the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Korolyov, outside of Moscow, Russian flight controllers are working uh, to coordinate uh, the final series of leak checks uh, at the docking interface between the Soyuz spacecraft and the Rosviet module. Those leak checks uh, got underway about uh, two hours ago as uh, the three crew members who arrived at the station, Laurel O'Hara, Ale Kononenko, and Nikolai Chub, uh, took off their Sokol uh, launch and entry suits to allow them to dry out following their ride to orbit and their three-hour transit uh, to the International Space Station. They have now uh, changed into more comfortable flight clothing and uh, are conducting their leak checks as uh, the technical specialists are waiting for the pressure to be equalized on both sides of the docking interface uh, before the vestibule, the small passageway uh, between the Soyuz hatch and the Rosviet module can be uh, equalized and pressurized to enable the hatches to swing open. We expect that hatch opening to take place at about 4.10 p.m. Uh, Central Time, 5.10 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the Soyuz hatch, uh, first uh, the Rosviet hatch will be open, then the Soyuz hatch. The three crew members will float inside, move into the Zvezda service module, put on headsets, and accept congratulatory uh, uh, comments and remarks from uh, spacecraft communicator Jessica Meir uh, here in Mission Control in Houston and Russian officials that are gathered on the balcony of the Russian Control Center in Korolyov. Uh, you see that balcony shot there. So we are expecting uh, those congratulatory remarks, essentially a welcoming ceremony, if you will, somewhere in the neighborhood of 4.30 p.m. Central Time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, uh, the three crew members who launched and docked to the space station today, Laurel O'Hara of NASA uh, on your left, Oleg Kononenko, the Soyuz commander in the center, and Nikolai Chub, a uh, first-time flyer uh, from Roscosmos on your right. This was O'Hara's first uh, flight into space, as, w as it was for Chub. For Kononenko, his fifth flight into space. Kononenko and Chub are embarking on a one-year mission aboard the International Space Station that will result in Kononenko uh, coming home a year from now with almost, or in the neighborhood of about 1,100 days in space, far out uh, stripping uh, Gennady Padalka of the mantle of most time and space by a human being uh, that he has held for a number of years. Kononenko in uh, surpassing 1,000 days in space and approaching the neighborhood of about 1,100 days in space will have uh, more than 200 days in space more than Gennady Padalka when he comes home with Chub on Soyuz MS-25. Uh, that uh, will take place uh, next September. O'Hara will spend six months on the International Space Station. She will come home 
on uh, the Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft with Oleg Novitsky and uh, uh, Belarus researcher Marina Vasilevskaya, who will be launching next spring along with NASA's Tracy Dyson on a taxi flight to bring the new MS-25 spacecraft up to the station. So O'Hara will come home on the same spacecraft that she launched on, except with different crewmates. I uh, send it at 23.51. Yes, set it for one minute after. As mentioned uh, a moment or two ago, uh, the flight of O'Hara, Kononenko, and Chubb began five hours, six minutes ago at 10.44 and 35 seconds a.m. Central Time, 8.44 p.m. at the launch site of the Baikonur Cosmodrome as uh, the Soyuz 2.18 a came to life Engine start was perfect. The turbo pumps came up to flight speed and liftoff occurred right on the money with the Soyuz uh, lifting off and arcing out to the northeast over the Central Asian Desert. About a minute and 10 seconds after launch, the uh, Soyuz rocket passed through the period of maximum dynamic pressure going supersonic at that point. One minute, uh, 58 seconds after launch, the first stage uh, engines shut down and the solid uh, strap-on boosters uh, were separated from the rest of the vehicle. The second stage engines uh, continued uh, to drive the Soyuz spacecraft uphill. They shut down at about the four minute, 58 second mark. The third stage engines continued the job as uh, the Soyuz continued its uh, uh, trek uphill into its preliminary orbit. 45 seconds after launch, the third stage engines shut down. The Soyuz spacecraft separated from the third stage, deployed its solar arrays and navigational antennas, and uh, the Soyuz began the chase to catch up to the International Space Station. Station Moscow, on space to ground two. So we're waiting for the passive uh, side of the hatch uh, opening. All of the rendezvous maneuvers and uh, thruster firings from the Soyuz uh, were executed in flawless fashion, and uh, the Soyuz approached the neighborhood of the International Space Station about three hours after launch. In this view of the Soyuz from external cameras on the International Space Station, uh, it was a totally automated approach. All of the uh, Soyuz systems operated in excellent shape, and uh, the final phase of the rendezvous following a fly around of the Soyuz uh, was conducted uh, with no issues whatsoever. The final approach command was given and the Soyuz slowly but surely uh, closed uh, the gap between itself and the station, finally docking uh, to the Rosviet module at, at a speed of about one-tenth of a meter per second. Uh, with the docking occurring over Ukraine, south of Kyiv, at uh, 1.53 p.m. Central Time, 2.53 p.m. Eastern Time. This uh, replay shows uh, the final uh, approach and the final few feet before docking with contact and capture occurring as planned. That was followed by uh, the docking probe being retracted to pull the two docking uh, surfaces flush against one another, allowing hooks to close on both sides of the docking interface to form a hard mate. transfer hatches, which steps need to be taken? On your go, on your, when you're ready. Hold on, a, hold on a minute, I can't... So uh, again, uh, the launch and docking uh, went as smooth as can be expected, uh, no issues whatsoever. Uh, one of the uh, smoothest uh, crew launches for a Soyuz vehicle in recent memory, with uh, no technical issues uh, having had to be worked uh, by the Soyuz crew, and uh, no issues on final approach and docking that culminated a three-hour, nine-minute uh, trip for Kononenko, Chub, and Laurel O'Hara. The uh, leak checks are continuing, uh, the pressure checks at the docking interface as uh, the crews on both sides of the docking interface, uh, Dmitry Patelin on the Rosviet side, the station side of the docking interface, and uh, Kononenko and Chub on the Soyuz side are in the process of checking out uh, their vehicle systems, uh, making sure that we have uh, the correct pressure equalization to enable the hatch to open and allow the uh, three new arrivals to board the International Space Station. There is a view 
of the newly arrived uh, Soyuz vehicle docked to the Ross Viet module with the okay, Northrop I Grumman Cygnus spacecraft finally. on the right of your screen and on the left of your screen is uh, the Nyoka multipurpose laboratory module and just out of the field of view atop the Prashal module, the node module docking port is the Soyuz MS-23 vehicle that will be the ride home in 12 days on September 27th for the station commander Sergei Prokopiev, Dmitry Patelin, and NASA's Frank Rubio who are wrapping up a 371 day mission aboard the International Space oh. Station which for when Rubio uh, sets a record for the longest single space flight by an American astronaut in history. Uh, yes, you need to take note of it. And by one second. Uh, there will be seven items. Uh, can you take note so I can take it from you? And there's a view inside uh, the Rosviet module at the hatchway to the uh, Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft. On the other side of that hatch is the Soyuz. Dmitry Patelin uh, will soon uh, begin the procedures to open up that hatch, followed by Kononenko opening up the hatch on his side of the docking interface to the Soyuz itself. Again, the crew, uh, the three crew members who just arrived at the station will float inside uh, there'll be, uh, I'm sure, hugs and handshakes uh, between themselves and the current uh, seven crew members on board the station, the Expedition 69 crew, uh, Sergei Prokopiev, Dmitry Patelin, Konstantin Borisov, Jasmine Mogbelli, and Frank Rubio, and uh, Satoshi Furukawa, uh, the JAXA astronaut, and Andy Mogensen, the European Space Agency astronaut. That's uh, your seven crew members on board uh, the station at the moment, soon to expand to a crew of 10 with the opening of the hatch uh, to the Soyuz spacecraft that's expected uh, in the next few minutes or so. Item four, five, do not perform. Item four, five is no execute. Yes. Item four, five, we will not execute. Execute uh, the verification cartridge uh, swap in the SA for item 4.3. Verification cartridge in the SA, page 3.5, item 4.3. Okay, item 4.3. Five one swap for P three. I got it. Okay, next is item four. A transfer from MRM one to the BO of Soyuz seven fifty five. From MRM one to BO. What, what should I? And at uh, 3.59 p.m. Central Time, 4.59 p.m. Eastern Time, the station hatch, the Rosviet module hatch on the side of the docking interface is now open. Barcode number. Dmitry uh, Patelin, Sergei Prokopiev are working uh, the procedures now to make sure that uh, Everything is in order on their side of the docking interface while the Soyuz crew, that's Konstantin Borisov now on the right, to make sure that everything uh, is in order to allow uh, Kononenko, Chub, and O'Hara to open up the Soyuz hatch so that they can float inside. R. So Sergey Prokopiev in the field of view, the station commander. Okay, I confirm. Wrapping up uh, along with Frank Rubio and Dmitry Patelin, a 371-day mission 
He'll be handing over station command to Andy Mogensen of the European Space Agency in a change of command ceremony on September 26th on the eve of the departure of Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin. And we're going to have our And a great view there of the uh, newly arrived Soyuz MS-24 that uh, functioned perfectly during its uh, ride to the International Space Station, launching uh, five hours and 16 minutes ago from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. And HSS is going to be at 2132. So it's the I hand them over for drawing. Just don't be afraid, guys. Don't freak out. Uh, I'm going to see you on the screens first. Item six. Okay, I got it. Wrote it down. Item five. Hand over species number three to Fred Ryan in the Soyuz 754. In the bill. Set up block number two. Um, it's located in room one. Set it up in the bill of Soyuz vehicle 755. In the bill of the uh, station crew will be testing out uh, some communications two, gear here uh, in a few minutes uh, to uh, be used for the welcoming remarks that are planned inside the Zvezda service module once uh, the three new crew members for Expedition 69 board the vehicle a short time from now. Expedition 69 will come to an end, and Expedition 70 will begin officially with the undocking of Procopia, Patellan, and Rubio in the wee hours of September 27th. So I'm going to open Kakate. Yes, so I'm, okay, Kakate open. I'm opening Kavade. Kavade is open. The International Space Station is currently flying 260 miles over the heart of Australia, moving from northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Oh, four and decreasing. Copy. Current pressure is 800. Copy. Station Moscow on Space Ground 2. Guys, just as an FYI, you are on the large screen and everybody can see you right now. Seven, four, six was the pressure on board the station. Yes, in the pressure in the orbital uh, compartment is seven, four, six. Current pressure is seven, nine, zero. So, prior to going into the onboard uh, compartment, execute the steps. So, when I'm going to... Okay, when I'm going to perform all the previous steps, I'll complete those. You need to deactivate all the calm assets, uh, turn off the atmosphere purification units in the bill. Oh, well, the guys are going to be waiting for me. Seven eight zero is the current pressure. Copy. Seven eight zero.
Is that it, iPod? Or do I think about that? iPad uh, charge status is 25 to 770. This is Mission Control Houston. Once again, uh, we're in the final phase of the uh, leak checks and pressure checks on the Soyuz side of the docking interface at the Rosviet module of the International Space Station. A good view right there of the Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft, that or 24 spacecraft, I should say, that arrived at the station uh, with docking at uh, 1.53 p.m. Central Time, 2.53 p.m. Eastern. Seven six five. Seven six five. The uh, station hatch, as you can see there on the uh, interface uh, with the Soyuz, was opened uh, about eight, seven or eight minutes ago. But uh, the key will be the opening of the Soyuz hatch, which we're expecting soon, as uh, Koninenko, Chub, and O'Hara complete uh, the leak checks and the pressure equalization Copy. on their side of the uh, docking interface. Welcoming remarks uh, by the newly arrived crew and congratulatory remarks from spacecraft communicator Jessica Mir here in Mission Control and Russian officials gathered at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov are expected around the bottom of the hour. The uh, leak checks and pressure measurements still being taken on the uh, Soyuz side of the docking interface. Again, uh, the Soyuz crew launched at uh, 10.44 a.m. Central Time this morning from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. They uh, launched into a uh, express lane fast track two orbit rendezvous profile that enabled them to dock three hours and nine minutes after launch at 1.53 p.m. Central Time, 2.53 p.m. Eastern Time. And this view now shows uh, the complement of vehicles on the Earth-facing side of the station. At the far left, docked to the Prashal module is the Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft that was launched unpiloted in no, February to replace uh, the vehicle that uh, Frank Rubio, Dmitry uh, Patelin, and Sergei Prokopiev launched on a year ago that uh, experienced a coolant leak back in December and uh, came home in February unpiloted. The uh, Soyuz MS-23 that is docked on the far left side of your station will be the ride home for Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin on September 27th when they undock 
from uh, the Persal module and land under their parachute uh, on the steppe of Kazakhstan to complete 371 days in space seven, and for five, Rubio, zero. of course, the longest single space flight Clock in seven, U.S. Five, history. Zero. Back now uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center with a view from the balcony camera in Korolyov outside of Moscow as we uh, continue to wait uh, for the pressure checks on board to com be completed and to allow the Soyuz hatch to swing open and allow the three newly arrived crew members to float inside and uh, join their crew members in the Zvezda service module for the welcoming remarks. 749. Seven four nine. Nikolai, um, can you set the timer for one or two minutes? Seven four eight. Seven four Station Commander Sergei Prokopiev in the Rossviet module at the uh, docking interface Seven with the Soyuz eight. spacecraft. The station hatch is open, now awaiting the opening of the Soyuz hatch. One minute, 15 elapsed. Okay, one minute. One minute has gone by? Yes. Almost a minute and a half. Two minutes have elapsed. MCC Moscow. The pressure is stable over two minutes. Continue uh, your steps. Open KKT, close KVD. KKT is closed. Item 8.1. Yes, I confirm. Yes, I confirm. 
I'm not able. I have set in the um, key. Opening. Opening. I have uh, released it. Opening the hatch. And uh, the Soyuz hatch is now open. Oh, have you been waiting for us for so long? It can't. It can't be. It can't be. Doctor Gable, just finish it in a minute. Uh, we're going to let the first timers in. Okay, uh, hatch is open. We see the hatch is open screen simultaneously. So should we translate in the station? Yes, go ahead. The Soyuz hatch opened at 4.16 p.m. Central okay, Time, 5.16 um, Eastern. Close it, but leave it a little bit ajar and then complete all our steps. Just uh, turn off duplex. Uh, calm line uh, speaking simultaneously. Well, if as soon as you translate there, I won't be able to hear you. So, N2, N4. So, right now, let me set the um, cap. So, then we're going to perform the atmosphere purification. Okay. Let us let us complete all the steps and then we'll uh, go into the station. Setting the the SU plug. Uh, do you have it? Okay. The sealing handle. KSD, uh, maybe uh, KSD screwdriver here, is the KSD plug here. Sergey uh, Prokopiev and Oleg uh, Kononenko uh, across uh, uh, the hatch the to the Soyuz spacecraft, uh, talking about the collection of tools to be brought inside. Again, the Soyuz hatch was opened at 4.16 p.m. Central, 5.16 p.m. Eastern Time. So I copy yeah. that you have set in the plug. I am taking out of the same container. I'm uh, taking the cover from the same container. I have uh, pulled out the cover and I am getting out the uh, scrapping units for the bill, copy. And I am donning This is Mission Control Houston. Once again, you're looking at uh, Station Commander Sergei Prokopiev in the Rosviet module. Hatch is uh, between the station and the newly arrived Soyuz MS-24, now open. The Soyuz hatch opening at 4.16 p.m. Central, 5.16 p.m. Eastern Time. Some uh, five and a half hours or so following uh, the Soyuz okay. crew's launch from the right. Baikonur Cosmodrome. I turned off the um, 
purification unit. I put in the plug. So we're going to turn off FAIR 14. FAIR 14, and then I'm going to go into the station. Okay, congratulations on successful docking, and have a good flight. Thank you, Anton. Thank you. Okay, and I'm out. Okay, I'm out. Once uh, the newly arrived crew members come on board, they will uh, move into the Zvezda service module for welcoming remarks. That will be followed by a routine uh, safety briefing that will be conducted by Prokopiev for the newly arrived crew members. That uh, safety briefing uh, basically points out uh, routes and uh, the uh, various modules of the station that the crew can move around in and what uh, would be required in the unlikely event uh, the crew members would have to evacuate the station on short notice. Later this evening, uh, Oleg Kononenko and uh, Nikolai Chub will complete the deactivation of station systems and Soyuz systems. Those Soyuz systems uh, that uh, will be in a caretaker state while the spacecraft is linked to the International Space Station, will be deactivated later this evening. Laurel O'Hara on board the International Space Station. Followed by Nikolai Chub. Ali Kononenko, uh, following the two first-time flyers into the International Space Station, and uh, the population of the station has now grown to 10. You're looking at Dmitry Patelin in the foreground, along with Frank Rubio on the left, Sergei Prokopiev in the back. Those three uh, will begin a handover period with O'Hara, Chub, and Kononenko en route to their return to Earth on September 27th. And uh, with the crew members now on board the station, there's a view of the uh, Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft docked to the Rosviet module. The crew now on board the station. They will be moving uh, into the Zvezda service module momentarily for uh, welcoming remarks, followed by a safety briefing that uh, will be conducted by Prokopiev to uh, basically uh, run down uh, some of the emergency procedures uh, that are typical and routine for a newly arrived crew. Later this evening, uh, Kononenko and Chub will be deactivating the Soyuz systems to put uh, the Soyuz uh, on a caretaker state, if you will, on station power.
Moscow Station on Space to Ground 1. Go ahead on Space to Ground 1. Anton, so we have moved over to the service module and we're turning on the equipment. So TV session will be on SHSS uh, and it's going to be in six uh, minutes. First, we're going to do the calm check. And if the calm is stable, I'm going to hand you over to um, all the dignitaries. Sounds good. And uh, the crew now tenfold in the uh, Zvezda service module. It's Expedition 69 uh, in full tow as we uh, await uh, the comm checks and uh, welcoming remarks by the crew. Guys, we're seeing uh, you on the MPEG. Oleg, Nikolai, Laurel, congratulations. You're looking so good. All right, guys, we've got four minutes, so uh, for, for the next four minutes, there will be no calm via mic, and we will not be able to hear you, just as an FYI. So the uh, crew... All 10 of them on board the Zvezda service module following the opening of the hatch to the Soyuz spacecraft just a few minutes ago at 4.16 p.m. Central Time. We are uh, awaiting uh, the station passing in range of Russian ground stations here to uh, enable the comm to uh, sync up and uh, get us going uh, with the start of the welcoming remarks. In the back row, uh, from left to right, Andy Mogensen, Frank Rubio, Dmitry Patelin, Jasmine Mogbelli, and Satoshi Furukawa. Konstantin Borisov uh, on the left in the front row, along with uh, Nikolai Chub, Sergei Prokopiev, Ali Kononenko, and in the far right in the front row, Laurel O'Hara. And uh, we're being advised uh, that uh, the comm should be linked up in about two and a half minutes, the voice comm uh, with, the, uh, with the video that you're seeing. So we should be getting underway just about two minutes from now.
Once again, uh, we're standing by for the uh, voice communications to sync up with the video that we're seeing. We should be getting underway here momentarily. Stand by for two more minutes. In two minutes, we will start. Station Moscow, CSS, how do you read me? Guys, how do you copy me on broadband communication system? Сергей, you're trying to say something, but unfortunately there is no sound. Раз, два, три, канал связи. ССС. Now we copy loud and clear. Uh, how do you copy us? Yes, we copy loud and clear as well. Then, uh, uh, you know, I'm giving the mic to the management. Guys, how do you copy? Vladimir Vasilyevich, uh, hello. Once again, good evening. We copy you loud and clear. I'm so happy that you have reached the station. It's a wonderful, uh, good-looking crew. So for those who are first-timers, my best wishes to you. Uh, work, do whatever you w need to do on the station, and everything will be fine, I'm sure. I'm uh, giving the mic to Dmitry Kalashnikov. He would like to say a few words. Uh, he is the main uh, person who solves all the issues. Uh, so, Dmitry will talk to you. Thank you, Vladimir Alexeyevich, so much for your kind words. So, now you have uh, edit crew. So, all the control team is happy that you are on board the station. And we wish you all the, all the very best, a very efficient work on the station. And those who are uh, to prepare for the landing, we are expecting you on the ground very soon. <laughs> we are ready, actually, we are all ready long ago. <laughs> yes, we know that. Dmitry Alexeyevich, thank you so much.
Once again, my congratulations. Uh, good luck to you all. And all the very best from all of us. Thank you. Maybe Nikolai will say a few words. I would like to greet uh, all the uh, ground control team. Uh, I knew many of uh, those people who are on console. I worked with them uh, on shifts. So thank you so much. Uh, our thanks from space now to you. Nikolai, you know our work from inside out, so to say. I think we will have full cooperation with you while you're on board. Thank you so much for everything from Laurel. Okay, now our guests here will talk to you. your friends and family members. <laughs> Laurel and Nikolai, enjoy settling into your new home. Привет, Alex, welcome back to the house again. Hello, I can see you. I'm happy to see you. So excited to follow along with your mission. Greetings to everyone. Congratulations to the entire ISF crew and to all of the ground teams around the world that have been able to see extraordinary events. Congratulations. Of course. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Yes, hello. There was some uh, you know, English conversation. Everything is fine. I can see you. I can see you on the right there. We are happy for everyone. Congratulations, everyone with your arrival on board the station. And of course, we wish the crew who uh, is preparing to go to back to the ground, we wish you all the very best uh, and very successful return. Thank you so much. Yes, we will see them off uh, very soon. They are ready. Thank you. Guys, uh, MCC Houston will talk to you from now on. We are standing by, then uh, we, uh, we, are, we are still here. Yeah, we can see people are waving us. All of Houston is uh, wishing you a very pleasant evening. Pretty exciting with three turtles up there now. It's a it's a bail once again. Mm -hmm. So enjoy your overlap. And have an incredible time up there with your crew. Enjoy your overlap and have an incredible time up there with your crew. <laughs> We're loving seeing all those smiles up there. We're loving seeing all those smiles up there. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, it's incredible to be here. It was a beautiful launch. It was a beautiful flight. Uh, the only thing better than seeing the Earth for the first time and seeing Space Station for the first time was coming through the hatch and seeing all these guys here. So thank you. Say hello. <laughs> just, just in peace. <laughs> Hey, Jessica, thanks so much. And it is absolutely awesome to have all these turtles up here. Uh, thank you to the NASA team and the Roscosmos team for 
uh, getting Soyuz 70 uh, up here with us, and uh, we look forward to spending the next week showing them around, and uh, we know they're going to have a fantastic mission. excited faces here in Houston, in the visitor's room, watching as well, and sending all their support and love. Have a great evening, guys. Thank you so much. Ребят, все, на этом у нас репортаж закончился. Огромное спасибо. Guys, we completed our coverage. Please. Огромные молодцы. Счастливы и довольны. Put all the com assets to initial condition, and we we can see that you're happy. And thank you so much, and goodbye. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, you just uh, heard uh, some of the welcoming remarks by the newly arrived crew members on board the International Space Station, the Soyuz MS-24 crew that launched uh, this morning just about six hours ago at uh, 10.44 a.m. Central Time, 11.44 a.m. Eastern Time, arriving uh, at the station for a docking to the Rossviet module three hours, nine minutes later at 1.53 p.m. Central, 2.53 p.m. Eastern Time. The leak checks uh, between uh, the Soyuz and the International Space Station uh, were ongoing. About uh, two hours after docking, everything was in good shape, so the hatches finally were opened. The Soyuz hatch opening at 4.16 p.m. Central Time, 5.16 p.m. Eastern Time, enabling Oleg Kononenko, Laurel O'Hara, and Nikolai Chub to float on board and join uh, their Expedition 69 crewmates, increasing the station population to 10 crew members for the next 12 days. A good view of the Soyuz MS-24 that functioned in flawless fashion from launch to docking, bringing to the International Space Station Kononenko, Chub, and O'Hara. Kononenko and Chub beginning one year on the International Space Station, Laurel O'Hara beginning a six-month stay on the International Outpost. So with that, we'll wrap up our coverage for today. Thanks for being with us throughout the course of the day for the launch, docking, and arrival on board the station of Ale Kononenko, Laurel O'Hara, and Nikolai Chub. This is Mission Control Houston.